Corey Paul Miller, the junior out of Littleton, Colorado, will start things off. Texas in white, black, and burnt orange, and they get the opening point. Nebraska, even though they're at home, the road reds. And it will be interesting to see Coach Early. A lot of these volleyball players know Coach Brown. They visited with Mac Brown when they were recruits at Texas. That's all part of the process in Austin. And they have not shown a whole lot of emotion up until this point. Let's see how they come out tonight. After their head coach, Jared Elliott, had talked about Mac Brown in their pregame tonight. Well, Haley comes out all cylinders firing there with a hard cross-court play and probably showing more emotion than she did at any point last night in their regional semifinal win against American University. Sarah Palmer, the Libro serving, those liberos, the opposite colored jerseys, they aren't allowed to attack. They tip over the top of the block, pancaked up by Allison. And now Paul Miller setting the outside and the block denied Rolfson, Point Texas. Good D to save the point. Yeah, this is part of Texas's defense. They have the player behind when she's in the back row. Hannah Allison is responsible for picking those up. And then on the other side of the net, Nebraska not doing a good enough job of helping its hitters out in coverage. Paul Miller looking for the other Rolfson, the twin sisters out of Papillion, Nebraska. As they pick up the point, they are part of the top-rated recruiting class in the nation coming out of high school last year. All kinds of new players for this Nebraska team. Only one was playing consistently. Middle blocker Megan Haggerty, but all the rest are new, either by transfer or by new, new arrival as freshmen. Pat Bell had a big night last night in the region semi. will pick up the point there in net violation. Point, Texas. Haggerty, that only returning starter from a Nebraska team that lost at home in the NCAA tournament to Oregon a year ago. But now they actually get to play on their own floor here in the Devaney Center instead of in Omaha last year. Ball sends it back. Now an opportunity for Kelsey Robinson. She'll need to have a huge night for the Huskers. If they are to advance. Good defense from Paul Miller. Robinson into the block of Bell. And Allison, the center is 5'11 and solid at the net. And boy, is Cat Bell giving some strong look right now. Wise timeout for John Cook, trying to settle this very tentative group down. Looked flat in the opening set last night. A whole different story for Texas tonight. The NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship is presented by Northwestern Mutual. Proud to be an official corporate partner of the NCAA. And in part by Bass Pro Shop Santa's Wonderland. Time passes. Hold on to Christmas. Hot start for the Horns. They're hitting 600. They have four blocks already and a 5-1 lead. Nebraska looking to get to the national semis for the 12th time for Texas. It would be a ninth appearance. They have been in the Elite Eight now, eight consecutive years. That ties the NCAA postseason record. Pat Brooks, the sophomore from Honolulu, to serve for the Horns. Chance in transition here for Nebraska. Paul Miller, the back set to Ralton. Dug up out of the back. Haley Eckerman, Big 12 Player of the Year, is denied. They'll go back outside to Haley over the top of the block. Point, Texas. Longhorns, the overall number one seed, but it has not been a cakewalk. They swept Texas State, but then dropped a set in their last two matchups, including the opening set last night against American, as the Patriot League champs were a handful before the Horns finally put them away, and it's been nothing but smooth sailing for the Huskers over Fairfield, Oregon, and quick work of San Diego last night. That's the kind of serve that Nebraska wants. Get them, they want to get Texas completely struggling getting the back, the ball back over the net. Let's see what Robinson can do. She's taken a lot of tentative swings so far. 
skied, and a chance here for Nebraska to at least send it back across. And now the Texas offense, and hit long by Bell, does not get a touch. Point Nebraska. One of Nebraska's real choices, and we saw it last night, Beth, is do they concentrate on trying to stop Haley or slow Haley and Bailey down on one side of the net, one sideline, or do they concentrate on slowing Cat Bell down? Cat Bell hurt American a lot last night. Off her head, and she still keeps in the play. Amber Rolfson tried to push it across. Now out to Eckerman. Looking for the line and got it down. Point Texas. Huskers thought that might have been wide. Here's the interesting thing when you talk about Texas, how athletic they are, but also how slow their offense is. They set so many high balls because Eckerman and Webster can touch close to 11 feet and hit over blocks. It'll be interesting to see how Nebraska's defense can move into position as the night progresses. Sent to Rawson. She tried to go down the line. Point Longhorn, so she missed it wide. And you mentioned the speed of that offense. Coach Jared Elliott actually talked about how they tried to speed it up a little in the spring, but it wasn't very effective. But he says next year, 2014, you're going to see a whole faster look for Texas. Looking at the junior out of Waterloo, Iowa. Sends it over. And there's a better looking swing for Kelsey Robinson. And that's the speed we were talking about. Texas flings it up to the moon. This one much faster, so there's some space, some daylight for Kelsey Robinson to attack. And she's going to need that space because those blockers across the net are big. She's a senior, but she's never played in a match this big before. Transferred from Tennessee, and in volleyball, you can play right away if you get the release. And Robinson misses wildly. Point Texas. And you've already got to wonder whether Robinson's trying to do too much for her team and for this huge crowd that's here to cheer the Huskers on. 14 kills for her last night. She became just the sixth Husker in history with over 500 kills in a season. And that was better played. Point Nebraska. And also remember, they, these teams played each other earlier this season, and Robinson had a monster game. Smart choice by her to, ta uh, to chip it down the line there. But she had a monster game, 26 kills. Haley Eckerman had 10 unforced errors. She's already come out much stronger. Cornell calls for it. Katie Lawson gets the kill. They are 6'3 twins. They were both top 20 recruits in the nation. And this is smart. Both Rolfson and Robinson attacked the line block of Hannah Allison, the setter for Texas across the net, who isn't nearly the blocker that Obama is. Watch the dump. Outside of Webster, and she gets the kill. Bailey is the senior from Baltimore. She had 21 kills to lead them in their regular season win. Two-time All-American will probably make it three straight this year. As Allison sends it across. Sliding behind is Haggerty. And back outside to Webster. Right at Robinson. Rolfson goes over the top and gets the kill. Well, Texas would really like to get their offense going behind the setter. This is a nice controlled swing that was open what was open space texas's rotation defense leaves some wide open space in the deep middle part back part of their court but nebraska really wants to get that offense going behind the setter to make robinson's job easier and of course katie rolfson's job easier the left side hitters for nebraska webster will rotate out so it's eckerman staying in on that front line, and we just heard from the 6'1 freshman right side, Chaco Bagu out of Capel, Texas, who was error-free hitting in her Sweet 16 debut last night, number 11 in white. Down at the bottom of your screen, this is Eckerman, the veteran. And that size really 
taking its toll as she gets the kill. And this, here comes a substitution, number 21 for Nebraska. Melanie Kyle, Kyle coming in, and what they need is more offense behind the setter. Cecilia Hall, who was in, is a better hitter jumping off of two feet. They're trying to bring somebody who's going to jump off of one and spread the offense out like that. Robinson pipes it out of the back. Palmer able to lift it up, and she'll bump it across. Paul Miller, Robson with the blast cross court. And the space that she got to hit at was all thanks to weapons in other parts of the court. You see the middle blocker, Molly McCage, for Texas way late. Big space to attack at. Nebraska needs much more space with their shorter hitters who don't attack the ball as high, as opposed to Texas with Eckerman and Webster who can attack very high and just go over the block. The stuff for Rolfson, and Nebraska wants to bring the crowd back into play here after falling behind early. They sell out over 8,000 per match, and that is carried over into the NCAA tournament. It is standing room only tonight for this matchup with their Big 12 rivals. And that's rejected by Texas, Sobagu. New to this rivalry. And boy, what a freshman year she's had. They weren't sure. Kind of brought her along slowly as a replacement for Shadir McNeil, who was such a big part of Texas's national title run last year. They have a lot of the same parts back, but it hasn't always been smooth. Bagu did play in the regular season matchup, but it was just the second game where she saw the court and played a big part in Texas dominating the block in that regular season game where it was a hard-fought 3-2 win down in Austin. Palmer. One of those seniors that wants to keep the run going for the Longhorns, but it's the freshman, Katie Rolfson, picks up another point. That wasn't a difficult play for Palmer to make. I'm sure she wants that one back. A half-speed roll shot to the corner. A good Libro has to be able to control that. She will go back to serve now. She and Obagu, two of the top freshmen in the country, Sister Amber Rolfson gets the kill. You probably just saw the best freshman in the country if you were watching that Wisconsin match in setter Lauren Carlini as she set the Badgers to the national semis on Thursday. Boy, what a season Wisconsin has had. Setting the body in the middle, topped up by Justine Wong Arantes. Back to Abagu, and she goes up for it. Point Texas. Yeah, and the problem here is Kyle, the middle for Nebraska, jumps with the setter who's back row. Don't want to jump on that play and leave a one on zero hitting opportunity for Texas. Three kills for Bobby so far. Here comes Robinson again going to the corner. She's got three kills here in the set. There's, we saw a ton of that last night against USD hitting high seam, hitting into the corner. Texas needs to play for that very shot. Now that's the play where a middle blocker has to stay aware of a front row setter, in that case, Hannah Allison for Texas, with the quick dump across the net. The 5'11 senior who is fifth all time in assists at Texas and has been their starter for the last four years. They were experimenting a little bit with the 6-2 offense when they played Nebraska earlier this year and then settled on their present lineup. Webster back in there in front. Back out to Bailey. Tip is covered by Paul Miller. Longarantes will set up Robinson. And Kelsey 
smokes it. And again, that's the smart choice. You have a very big blocker, middle blocker in Cat Bell, and then a much shorter one, Hannah Allison, down the line. You want to attack the shorter blocker, but don't drive it down into her. Hit it into the deep perimeter of the court. Freshman Brown Isles on to serve. Allison looking for Bell, sliding behind. Cat Bell continues to tear it up here in the regional. And she has been in contacting the, this ball at such a high point, coming back strong from that ACL injury. Coach Jared Elliott said they've never seen somebody return so quickly, and she's elevating and giving herself lots of opportunities on offense. Robinson gets another kill. Kent Nebraska. And now Kelsey back behind the line. It's not very often you're a player of the year in two major conferences. And Robinson, SEC, and now Big Ten player of the year honors. And the stuff for Texas. Again, Allison alongside the middle blocker. Hard to pick on the setter when she's blocking this well. Yeah, she's four inches shorter, but Ralston brought, uh, pulled the ball down into her right hand. Got to hit the ball, the, what we call the edges of the block, the high fingers the, and the daylight, of course. Third block for Texas. Haggerty has that one sent back. Number four for the Horns. And it's time for a timeout for John Cook. Well, Haley Eckerman leading the charge tonight for Texas. She's got four of their kills, and they're up here in the first. First set, best of five here for a spot in the national semifinals in Seattle on Thursday and Texas with the lead. Let's take a look at how plans for success are brought to you by Northwestern Mutual. Coach. Well, nobody is taking the night off for Texas yeah. so far, hitting a cool 300. Nebraska can win if they have the best player in the gym, Kelsey Robinson, on the top of her game. She came out tentative. She's doing a little better now, but Really, Nebraska is having a great deal of trouble getting production from the Rolfson twins, and that's going to hurt them if they don't get it going and slow somebody on Texas down. Five Texas blocks and eight Nebraska hitting errors thus far. And that is nine. So nine hitting errors. Five of those are Texas blocks. Four are just clean out of bounds like that one. Only two for Texas. That's a seven-point difference, and that explains all of this and more. Texas with a six-point lead. It's the largest of the set for the Horns. And the overpass, and Webster takes advantage. So that's not a hitting error, but there is a passing error. Robinson is pinching in and taking more court. Now they're going to, Nebraska's going to pass with just two. Robinson will take one. She gets the good pass that they want but can't put the ball away on offense. Right at Eckerman, and now Webster will try and finish it off. Robson beats the block. Point of Huskers. And a near block. There was space, and Molly McCage just couldn't get number five for Texas, the middle blocker, could not get her right hand over the net in time. That's one of the benefits of running a faster offense as opposed to the high ball left side offense that Texas runs. Cage has it popped up. Good dig there by Robinson. Katie Rolfson tried to go across court. Palmer able to lift it. And the slam from Kyle coming off the bench. And that's exactly why Cook put her in the game. She needs to spread the game out. And so Kyle goes behind. And again, hits the daylight. CC Hall, the starting middle blocker, can't run that play nearly as effectively as Kyle. Hitting error for Abadu into the net, so a couple points in a row for the Huskers, and now it's timeout Texas.
Well, the last two teams in the NCAA Men's Soccer Championships have been determined. It's down to the three-seed Notre Dame, the five-seed Maryland. It's an all-ACC affair for the national championship tomorrow at 3 Eastern. The Men's College Cup presented by Northwestern Mutual Sunday at 3 o'clock on ESPNU, also live on the Watch ESPN app. Let's take you back to the regular season meeting between these two on September 22nd at Gregory Gym in Austin before a sellout crowd there that was much more burnt orange. It went to five, but it was too much Texas. Bailey Webster had a big day and was able to knock it away on match point three to two, the final there. That is the last five set match, by the way, that the Longhorns have been a part of. They come in here. Winners of 22 in a row. They haven't lost since that Arizona State game uh, back on September 13th. That was some 92 days ago. So they have gotten accustomed to winning. Well, you got to give Texas credit for staying ready. Their Big 12 conference just doesn't have as many top 25 ranked teams as you would yeah. see in the Big 10, which is no surprise. Big 10 already with two teams into the national semifinals in Penn State and Wisconsin. And so it's tough to stay really, I guess, sharp through the, once you get into your conference season. So you've got to get scheduled people like Nebraska and all those other early tough foes that they had. Get your preparation in earlier. This is the 18th ranked opponent tonight for Nebraska of the season. That is twice as many as Texas. And when you talk about realignment in college sports, in volleyball, no one was more affected than the Big 12 Conference. They lose perennial tournament teams, Nebraska, Missouri, and Texas A&M. And it's no longer a war every night, as any Big, coach, uh, Big Ten coach will tell you, that they have to be on their game every single opponent in that conference. Oh, boy, that is a very, very tentative swing. By right, Katie Rolfson. Abagu around the wrong side of the antenna on that swing point, Nebraska. Of course, they're trying. Nebraska is for a 12th appearance. Texas is trying for a ninth. But for Nebraska to have some success here, those freshman twins are going to have to calm down and give Nebraska some offensive production. Here come the Longhorns. Now to Eckerman. Got it. And they had that interesting variety of offense. They had a double quick coming at the blockers on the left side of the Nebraska block and then go high to Eckerman instead, and that left some angle to attack. Two points from the opening set here for Texas. Rolfson couldn't push it through the block. A sign of impatience there, too. She just gave the free ball to Texas, and Texas does what you would want to do, want your team to do, and that is ram it right back across the net. Playing with an intensity that had not yet revealed itself in this NCAA tournament. This is a battle-tested and ready-to-roll Texas team tonight. Nebraska staves off a set point. And now Texas will serve receive to try and end it. Allison Obagu, they go to the right. 